Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I, I'm going to get off my phone. No problem. There you go. Are we waiting on anyone else, Ryan, on your end? Or? Uh, no. Okay. Give me uh, one second, please. And if you can uh, confirm that your uh, website is what you see on the screen? Yes, it is. We're all good. All right, first off, uh, where are you guys located, Ryan? In Seattle. What's the uh, weather like there right now? Um, gray, but not raining yet. It's gray, uh, but not raining. So, yeah, it's decent. Uh, yeah, well, James. So, so um, tell me a little bit more about what you do and really, I guess, what Bonsai Media Group does in a more focused environment and what your uh, role directly is, if you don't mind. Okay. <clears throat> We're pretty much a full service internet marketing agency. We do web design, development, conversion rate optimization, uh, SEO, email marketing, online marketing of all sorts. So, you know, paid advertising, you know, um, the whole gamut, whether it be at Hulu or any of those type of services as well. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and the key word there, we'll have a pretty relevant conversation is our conversion focus a lot of what you guys do so so you guys are doing do you guys uh, do hosting as well or all of it's based off uh, analysis and I'm sure analytics SEO all that world we do, we do some website hosting for some of our clients but it's not um, our major focus okay so basically if they ask uh, it happens to be there yes so uh, if you, if you what are you guys currently using for any kind of uh, web intelligence or analytics? I don't know what you guys use either internally on your site or for other uh, entities that you guys manage. We use primarily Google Analytics. Okay. Are you, uh, do you use anything else, usability tools, any conversion specialty um, outside tagging, outside of Google Analytics, or is that it for the most part? No, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, what about for, you said you do SEO-wise, do you guys use any kind of tool for competitor monitoring? Anything like Compete or Quantcast? I don't know if you're familiar with those companies, anything? Um, yeah, uh, no, we don't use Quantcast. I mean, we use advanced web ranking and um, various tools like SEO Moz or SEM Rush, that sort of stuff for competitive analysis. But no, we don't use Quantcast. Okay, no, and I'm real familiar with SEM Rush and what. So, uh, are you? And last question: You personally, are you? Do you have a? Where are you involved with that? Do you do the reporting? Do you look at reports that other people create, or what's your uh, direct role? I'm the, I'm the director of internet marketing. Um, I mean, I have my own list of clients that I do reports for. We're looking to outsource, you know, a lot of our reporting um, to either interns or new hires. Okay, so you're just kind of, a, you have your foot in a lot of things, basically, on the top level? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, so uh, to introduce us on my end, uh, Upco is a digital marketing intelligence company. Our uh, two primary assets are web intelligence, which is basically an advanced version of analytics, and uh, we also do digital competitive intelligence, which is basically um, similar to the SEO Moz, SEM Rush world. I can show you pretty distinct examples. So. So we have uh, complete SEO insight as well as the analytics integrated into one module. And, uh, our, and I'm going to start by giving you about a 10-minute intro to our differentiators on the web intelligence end. And after that, a couple minutes on the competitive intelligence. And then we can talk about, you know, potential use and added value in your uh, agency's case. So. All right. All right, great. So uh, first off, our analytics tool, our, uh, our web intelligence, so to speak, um, our main differentiator from Google, as an example, is by uh, all analytics tools, really, by default, what they're doing is, if I'm on your home page, let's say I move around for a few seconds, I enter in a few keys into a form, then I click About Us. They're creating one record on the page-by-page -page transition. That's the time that they're creating a record. Those records are accumulated, you know, to aggregate and do whatever analysis you guys want to do internally. But the key point is they're not capturing all of the on-page action and what's happening, you know, in precise detail. Our technology is um, it's proprietary that we're the first uh, company to capture the entire online experience. What that means is if I go on your search bar, before I click go, anything that's entered in, 
each individual character is entered as, as its own unique data point. So what that lets you, knew, lets you do is go a lot deeper into conversion scenarios, analysis, understand customer struggle. Aside from text entry, that same thing applies for all mouse movement. If someone selects the word and, pauses for three seconds, we actually have a record that can see how many other, how many other people along your site's history made that same action. So that's a starting point to be able to get deeper insight into what's happening on a website. Okay. Is that pretty straightforward? Yeah. Okay. Now the other end of the coin, the more uh, romanticized element is, because we're capturing everything that happens on a website, we're also able to replay all the information and um, it's all synced to the data. So anywhere you see a piece of data, you can click play on any segment, any tag, any you know action, whether you want to look at specific segments or site-wide, you can click play and you can see exactly what happened on that page um, from the exact eyes of your customer. I'm going to let this just run for a second to uh, show you, I suppose, the detail and practical use of. And if it's not obvious, um, this would be your view for all of your clients. Uh, you'd add a lightweight page tag. It's actually more lightweight than Google Analytics, so it's not going to have any effect on your site. As soon as it's added on a page, you have these records automatically created from every angle. So, nice. so I'll mention a couple uh, couple uh, relevant aspects of this, aside from what you normally see, is um, what we've noticed a lot of clients. So, so we do uh, customize. So because we're storing a thousand times the data of normal analytics, but we're not just going to give you a huge pile to dig through. It's not practical. So we just created a flexible system so you can just define your KPIs with a lot more precision. I'll give you an example that usually doesn't occur to someone that's used in a lot of cases is um, what we do for clients who have, let's say, a quote form. Their main call to action is for high-value products is filling out a form for, for their contact. We create tags for those clients that say, let me know how many times someone clicked delete on that form and how much time they spent on that form as a whole to understand how serious of a customer they are. Because if you know the SEO world, a lot of companies are just kind of data diving and shooting thousands of emails hoping someone responds versus you can watch someone and you can kind of understand the psychology to see if you have the upper hand on a contact or, you know, for mortgage companies, banks, seeing how serious someone is in the qualifying process. So that's just one example. All right. All right. Um, other details here, usability-wise, always a big deal. We have complete control over these videos because they're separate pieces of data. So you can pause, you can play, you can change the speed it plays in. And when you click this button here, what it does is it uh, recreates the session from the exact resolution of your client. So, you know, here we have a computer example and a mobile example. It's all going to look accurate, accurate dependent on device. So. Oh yeah, so that this tracks what someone's doing on mobile as well. You can do same same principles apply. Same principles. I'm going to show you this 20 second example because this is usually for agencies. What's I mean, everyone's struggling now. Mobile. No one has fully figured out how to optimize and you know perfect conversion rates with mobile. There's so many devices. I think we're all going to be in discovery mode for a couple of years. So um, what we've done in this example, what you're going to see on the screen is the actual finger movement on each page. We're from a mobile phone and. Uh, you know, on a mobile phone, sometimes you have multiple touch points. You use your finger to scroll up and down, then you can use your other finger to select the link. This example here is going to differentiate the first finger from the second to kind of just show how in-depth we go. So. so if someone's on your site using mobile, this is what you would be able to see on all the sessions. That's the first finger kind of controlling an orange, the second one moving. And obviously that example also shows um, you see the actual orientation flips as well. So if you want to know, hey, how many people are flipping their phone this year? How often are they looking this? Because this is a supplemental data record and not just a big pain in the ass video that needs to be edited individually, we can go through and dig up anything you see from a data perspective as well. You have any questions there, uh, Brian, or do you want me to keep going forward? No, keep going. Okay. All right, so yeah, these were in, um, examples within our module. These were examples from a capability perspective. So what I'm going to show you next is just a couple other uh, capabilities. Then I'm going to show you a practical use case and what it looks like, you know, from the starting point that you actually use. So the other, uh, other cool capability shown is 
this technology is also proprietary. Um, we have a couple patents pending on it. It's the uh, this is the creation. Um, if you guys had five people actively on your site, you'd be able to see them all individually. You'd be able to monitor exactly what they're doing. You'd be able to focus on any individual visit and engage them live with the chat. Or you can use a tagging system to basically say, I want this pop-up that says, hey, I see you came here five. Realistically, if you have an abandoned, abandoned customer who has a lot of high value, and you're like, why does this guy keep leaving the site? Oh, I've noticed that he's went to the pricing section. So you could assign a pop-up only for that individual visitor the next time he visits that says, hey, guess what? We're 70% off, you know, whatever you want to say. You can incentivize them, and you have control of the live traffic and engagement. So. We have all of our usability features um, custom tied into this live engagement module as well. Um, other note here, just to mention, um, for very high traffic clients, um, you don't need to see this for your entire site. Because we have, we, have, uh, we have one unified data source for everything I'm going to be showing you in this presentation today. But that means that in this case, if you want to choose a segment, such as I want to look at people who came six times to my site and purchased before. You can turn on this live lens to only look at that segment of visitors. So that's very applicable, you know, for sites getting, I don't know how large uh, traffic some of your clients are, but people getting tens of millions a day might only want to say, hey, why do people at China keep struggling conversion-wise? Let's see what that looks like. Okay, we're either uh, figuring out what the problems are by watching them live or engaging them directly and figuring them out. So, All right. From this mode here, um, you can click View Details on any live view. And that kind of uh, does a deeper dig into that customer's history. So this usually, in our product, this actually opens on the set. Let me grab a more in-depth example. I'm kind of, that's not someone with much history. So, Assuming that that guy I just clicked had a lot of history on the site. In this case, it shows um, 84 past sessions for that visitor. So I can take a look at the what we call this is the entire customer experience from one view. So this here is, um, here's the page he's on. Here's the entire session listed underneath with a panoramic view to go back and forth. You have any associated data based on our thousand times as much data source that you can tag, that you can manipulate, you know, just, just so if you're a sales site retail, you can say Amazon could write, hey, this, this person purchased four products in the past, he, you know, whatever you want to define beforehand data wise. So we have that, and on top here, what's really relevant is you can switch around from session to session. So if you have a customer, even for servicing end, and someone says, hey, I went on your site last week, I tried to do something, I wasn't able to do it. You don't got to kind of dig around a bunch of broad-based data numbers. You can go directly into that session with the date, and while you're talking to him, understand exactly what the problem was. And obviously, anytime you're doing this, it gives you a lot of um, cues when it comes down to usability problems on your end, or hey, some random company just came up with a new browser that's having problems loading. Definitely. I'll mention here, um, from a technical standpoint, if there's an error generated by a website on the page, it will show up accurately. We're not just taking a template or a picture of your site. This is recreating the code each time, so it's going to be very uh, responsive to what actually happened. Nice. You got any questions at this point before I just kind of show you what the um, actual view looks within? Or? No, no, I'm just kind of taking it all in. Yeah, okay. um, yeah and please feel free to interrupt me, especially now. Uh, Especially now that you've gotten the base level. So interrupt me if there's any uh, questions while I'm going. So. All right. Okay. All right. So because you're an agency, I'll show you. We do have the agency model where if you're managing um, many different sites, you can kind of go back and forth between them. If, if you're the one, you know, if it's not hosted on their end internally, if you want to take a look yourself. Um, if you're doing it for one website, obviously it wouldn't show a dashboard. It would just log into the website. So. So we have our starting point here. I mean, big difference between our analytics other than being able to go a thousand times deeper and customize, you know, which dashboards are necessary to you. We just have six by default is all of these analytics, as I mentioned, if you want to take a look at, let's see the people who came from Google for my site. It lets you dig to that session by session view for that segment. So this is kind of a, um, inter I showed you the more detailed views before. This is the intermediary view where 
In this case, um, if, you, if you cared a lot about entry domains and SEO, we have where they came from listed. We have all the information we think is relevant by default. And you guys have the capability to create any kind of tagging tools that are specific for your company. So if you said, hey, we're real big on clients who are coming from this location, they would be tagged with a coloring system, which would let you kind of play around and look at what you want to look at. What I think is a big differentiator from other analytics product here is we want the extra mile two usability wise. And this by, de you know, most, most uh, analysis products are done on a session by session basis or page by page. It's one or the other when it comes down to the different views. Then you kind of got to dig around to see what you want. We selected this initial segment of Google in this case. So we have 177 people for whatever, you know, date was defined that came from Google session by session. I want to put custom review. Now it changes the definition of the data based on IP address or cookie. That's your choice. So now it's only showing unique entries for each individual uh, visitor. So, you know, because visitors can have multiple sessions. We can do that same thing to go page by page as well with these containers. So if you wanted to look at more usability on specific pages, you wouldn't have to dig through the whole session. You could do it on a case-by-case uh, -case basis. The last two, uh, I guess, little... Uh, Parts that's integrated within our analytics is from here. You can click play directly to get a quick preview of what happened. Um, it plays directly through the session or to connect the dot from the view that I had uh, showed you earlier. You click view details. Let's hope this is someone with some history. So, um, details. Not a lot of history, but you get the premise. You can dig now. Now we have the customer view that's direct from the dashboard before, which gives the other details. So in the case like we gave before with a lot of um, a lot of past history, you can go back and forth from these views seamlessly. So usability-wise, we spent a few years making sure everything we could think of after studying the Google, the Omniture, the IBM, all of those products, that not only were we able to store a thousand times the data and play it, but that our usability isn't going to be as much data diving and, you know, seeing 50 different tabs to look at each uh, individual metric. Any questions there, Ryan? Um, no, not really. I mean, but digging into the data, can you show me what some of those views look like as far as, you know, seeing the clicks, conversions, bounce rate, all that stuff? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, to be honest, this is our, uh, we have a, quite a few modules. This is kind of the top level module. So if you want to get real dirty in the reporting dashboard, it's usually best to have a follow up with a different module, but I'll show you a couple of views if I'd answer those questions. Sounds like your biggest issue then would be the doing this in a bulk basis as opposed to micro, more macro level. Okay. All right. So in this case, uh, once again, I said this is customized. You can choose which uh, metrics. For this site, we have traffic source, background, social media refers, keyword entry, a few other things. From this view, to get the um, total number, total number of statistics, you can create a graph in five different ways to uh, accumulate that data. You can email it to anyone within your organization in multiple formats. And you can add metrics directly on this page to, in this case, default, we have mouse clicks, form submitted, mobile, United States International. The point here is when you click these, they get added to the graph to compare and contrast directly to the starting metric. All right. Um, do you guys use, uh, do you guys use conversion funnels? Is that something you are familiar with or use regularly? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, for some clients where it makes sense. Some clients where it makes sense. What about uh, heat maps on your end? Um, uh, yeah, we, uh, we definitely look at those. Okay, give me a second. Doing user, yeah, user experience. Okay, I'm going to get out of my uh, testing view for these. I have these. All right, well, that, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, that, that updated here. So that added the mobile device correlation to traffic source breakdown, adds it all within the report, gives flexibility to see it how you please. So, yeah, and uh, more than welcome, if you want to do a deeper dump, we can do that, uh, schedule that in the future. But for now, I'm just going to show you a couple baseline uh, things I think might be relevant. So, so conversion funnel-wise, assuming you are familiar with what a conversion funnel is, um, one of the big differentiators and practical uses of the site is Usually, let's go to your site. Let's say you made a conversion funnel that said, I want to know how many people came from the home page, then when, I don't know what your guys' primary call to action of uh, skimming it, but let's say you want to know how many people went to the services page from the home page and visited about us at some point of time. 
So you guys are taking a look at your abandonment rates, you know, you're getting a number, let's say you're at 90%, and you see that 50 people didn't do what you, what you wanted them to do. Usually, you kind of have to go back to the drawing board and say, well, how do I get this number to be less than 50 for my primary conversion or call to action, you know? Let's, let's start with the drawing board on the marketing end. Because on our end, you might be able to guess what we're going to do. We're, we have this integrated for all of the abandoners and people who dropped out of each conversion cycle. It's integrated with our videos directly. So we're giving you the why in each example, and you don't have to guess around and figure out how you can service those clients. So this example here, I think, is relevant because this is used some um, cuts up companies are interested in doing this outside of even the analytics is this was a while ago we were testing internally because um, we suspected we might have website errors in a specific version so we looked through our conversion funnel here and as I said it showed correctly that I'm not going to yell at my marketing guys my tech guys all lie and tell me it's never their fault you know so I can say hey tech guys come here you can't BS me you know this is what happened on this customer's visit. He had a website related error. So this is an outlier when I'm trying to analyze what happened from the customer, you know, from the uh, marketing end. So that's that's fantastic. I can see I can see our dev guys even using this when they're trying to um, troubleshoot like what someone saw and you know on the um, going on as they're developing a website and cross browser testing and all that sort of stuff and you know, okay, this isn't displaying properly and you know this version of this operating system or whatnot. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm, I'm actually going to show you the example. Now, this 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 side isn't the example. But other than that, this gives us the, I dug from that view to the actual form interaction, which in this case listed out what was typed in the form, how long the user stopped, how long they spent filling it out. And in one go refers to, um, in our specific case, we want to know how many times people went back and changed things before clicking submit. Because a lot of cases, you know, they might be confused. Why doesn't someone, why isn't someone able to enter in their email every time? Oh, it's because we had a button that didn't show up right in Firefox, you know? You never know. So. Okay, I'm going to show you a more, uh, an example of customized statistics we use with this form optimization. One moment, please. I need to get into a different um, module. Then we'll wrap it up in a couple of minutes and chat. But, uh, yeah, usually our first meeting for agencies like you guys doing a lot is all capabilities overview. And then we can talk about, you know, like you said, practical uses because no one's going to use uh, all these tools are about capability. You know, you use what you're going to use. So. Exactly. So um, let me pull up the starting site for this to make some more sense. So this example here, this isn't actually a client. It's a fake site on our end, but it's mimicking for, for a case study purposes. So this is a bank here that basically their main call to action is trying to upsell current clients on wealth management. So they have this form that you fill in. One of the terms you select in the form is total amount of investable assets. This is just one example. So what we figured out for them, you know, they paid us uh, to do a few hours of personal analysis, and we figured out that in their case, they said they weren't sure if it was profitable to upsell current clients, but that's what they wanted. So we told them, we're going to create an analytic that says if someone selected a higher value, then selected a lower value before submitting, we're going to tag them as better upsell candidates. Because common sense, if you're ordering food at a restaurant and I order something that costs $20, then I change to something that costs 10 last second, there's a pretty good chance I have $20 in my pocket, you know? Yep. If that makes sense to you. So this example, yeah. go ahead. Well, I was thinking about that earlier when you were showing me um, recording what people are doing online. You can see, I've seen that scene, what they change as part is what they're willing to spend or not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the big thing about this is we tried hard. It's impossible to make this perfect for every case. It's just too much data. So in our case, on average, we'll have, you know, eight hours of customization for a form. And what results in this example here is the macro-based analysis over the lifetime of that form. So we came up with this con confidence metric to say how confident people are going through here. And we had a separate view uh, that shows... 
So that's macro-based. This is micro-based where they wanted to only see what was filled in without looking at the rest of the site-related data in that form. And we're able to label abandoned for cases where they didn't submit that data. This is another uh, first capability where, you know, everyone, even Google, their keywords, they don't know what people entered into their keywords until someone enters it and presses enter on the page. Then it's stored internally. When someone's just playing around typing things, they don't have ways to discover and replay the keystrokes unless they submit. So we do, so we're able to differentiate and show tools like that. So if you wanted to say something like, all I want to see is when people abandon, what do they type into the form, we're able to do that. So. Um, that, that's going to be it. Other than that, I'll just tell you, uh, I mean, it sounds like you guys are obviously pretty familiar with how these, uh, how these modules I'm referring to, but heat maps, the same point I mentioned with conversion funnels, heat maps, if you see that someone's clicking, let's say you see that 50 people clicked here in the gray, that's great that I see that they click there. Now I got to figure out how I fix that problem. Our case, all the heat maps are directly linked to that session as well. So if you see 50 people clicked here and you're trying to figure out how do I change it, you can click on that point click and see the exact session. So in, and I'll tell you what, common sense wise, 90% of the time it's going to be a browser problem or a web problem to say, hey, our responsive design wasn't as responsive as we thought, you know. So it's just all this stuff is all about giving you the why in analytics as opposed to just the what. So. All right. Do you have any, uh, this is going to, I'm going to dig, uh, dig pretty, uh, pretty shallow and short competitive, competitive intelligence. intelligence. Do you have any questions about the analytics other than potentially wanting to do a deeper dig on the reporting? No, I think we're good on what you got right now. Okay, great. So uh, I have this open over here. Make sure I'm in the right, okay, I am, the right environment. So I talked earlier about how we do um, competitive intelligence. So um, the long story short of it is, one second. So the long story short of it is, um, you know, almost everyone relies on, SEO Moz has quite a few domains as well, but almost everyone, Google and Bing have approximately 30 million domains in their index. And as you know, through SEO, it's the site owner's liability to get indexed and get their attention, you know, if they have linking, whatever they're doing. The second you register a domain, it's not going to be indexed in Google automatically. We created an index that aggressively, every time a domain gets registered, we're indexing it in our database. So long story short, we have 180 million domains. We update every 24 hours for all the new ones. So we're able to do analytics across the whole Internet based on, um, based on new domains and not just what gets indexed. So this example here was uh, Keyword Super. Are, are you personally decently familiar with SEO, Ryan? Yes. Okay, so long story short, this word keyword is not meta keyword. This is custom algorithm that we defined to say that we thought it was more relevant because of how many companies that don't know SEO to measure how many times this specific word was used only in the text of the body at least four times. So the example here is um, it just, you know, so companies can request these algorithms on their own. On our end, internally, it's not a huge pain because we have a very large. That's a great example. I accidentally clicked, but uh, the point of it is, we can go. The point of it is, you know, it gives insight into what's happening across the internet. <laughs> Regular Viagra wasn't enough. They need Super Viagra. Exactly. So, and a lot of times it's keyword discovery. You know, this isn't a great example, but for a couple of medical companies, we're talking about a new technology they have. With I'm actually going to put in the example. This is probably the only way to make it. I believe it was aortic valve. Okay. So they wanted to basically know what's the mainstream, how many people know, use this term regularly. So, I mean, of course, you can dig through all the um, Google, the uh, all the AdWords type tools. And no, I'm sorry, not AdWords, but the tools to see competition versus demand. But my first step is a lot of times discovering how many sites are using it in a way we define. From here, I know that, you know, these are some words that could be associated. And I know how mainstream that word usage already is. So... Uh... Last thing about that, the common sense uh, integration we have directly into our module, same place as analytics. So, I'm throw in variety of. So, in this case, we have the index of um, every website out there. Do I have? I think I have this one already loaded. No. A, B, C, D. So, you put in a website, it does an auto search for all of the ones with the similar name. I click enter, I click plus, and that adds it to a dashboard which outlines the traffic rank 
some social media and performance statistics by default. So if I want to select a few of these and click compare, throws it on a dashboard to compare head to head on, you know, your competitors, which most of your competitors probably want to have zero here, to understand what percentile you rank with website performance, to understand, you know, where your traffic link lies and any other information that you can detect from the source code. So in this case, you know, analytics you can detect as well. So if you guys are going after a client, and you even for client targeting in your case, you could get a pretty quick top level analysis of the functionality on their website if they're using a CMS. And underneath here, we also have a charting system to compare head to head. Last view, I'm, last view I'll show you there is a practical closer to deliverable here. Um, this is a deliverable we created internally. So if you highlight your competitors, we're able to do that over the life cycle. So if you, the, if you want automatic awareness into what you're doing, you could look at traffic rank, and every month you could see the increased percentage, and you could see anything detectable through the source code, we can customize, throw on a dashboard to say, okay, their site went up 40% last month, their social media, they had 80 million Facebook likes. There's probably a correlation between those two hey, PR guy, dig and see, you know, what new um, initiatives you may have used to do that, so. Wow. So, yeah, I know this stuff. I'm going to cut myself off now. This stuff gets uh, pretty deep on the end, but um, do you have any questions based off the conversation? No, I mean, I'm pretty impressed. I'd definitely like to schedule another um, interview or um, another meeting and um, go through some of the deeper stuff and bring in a couple other guys with me to look at it. Great. Great. Hey, Ryan, Ryan, my name is James. I, I popped in a little bit late, but um, I um, just a couple quick, quick questions, actually a little bit of info. So on the business side, we do have an agency program. We're actively looking for agency partners, and by, by partner, I mean a real partnership. Um, we, as part of the partnership, we um, work with you on a friend with customers, so we're available for sales calls. We're obviously available on the back end, and we can be seamless, too, so we can be part of your organization if you want us to be. We can be hoop code, so you can obviously white label it, too, if you wanted to. Um, we have a commitment um, paperwork uh, process that we have to sign you up. Uh, there's no cost. We normally charge $500. We're doing a promo through the end of the month where if you sign up, um, we, we do it to you at no cost. And then we give you a discount, and it can range between 15 to 25%. Uh, depending uh, on, um, uh, you know, the, the amount of business that you do and stuff. We, you know, obviously, too, we allow you to go to market up beyond that. You're, you're more than able to. So, so any questions on any of that? Um, no. Um, I have kind of questions on some of the, what are the costs associated with the platform? <laughs> Okay, okay, it, it depends, depends on the amount of traffic. traffic. So, um, so um, what I'm going to do what probably, is probably is punt, punt on that until our next meeting. meeting. I just want to make you aware of the agency program, 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 how it works. And, 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 and pricing, and pricing honestly, honestly, we don't we provide, provide that to you. Actually, I'm just trying to pay for it. Because that is sort of the NDA type of info that we put out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what would be appropriate to set the next call? You guys available next week? Yeah. Okay. okay. How about, How about uh, uh, Wednesday? Wednesday exactly? Let me see here. Yeah, give me a minute to check my calendar. Yeah, look, I'll, 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 I'll check, check it. Um, next. Yeah, yeah. Looks like I'm good next Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Out with time. With time. Give me one minute, please. Um, any time after, let's say. Um, Anytime after 1.30, so maybe around 2 o'clock. Does that sound good? What time zone are you guys, if you can remind me? Right? Oh, Pacific. Oh, you're Pacific? Oh, yeah, Seattle. I'm retarded. So it's on the same side. We're in California. So. Okay. Um, give, me, give me one second, James. Let me check this. Where, real quick. Where are you guys located? In Seattle. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, you said anytime after 1.30? Yeah. 3 p.m. or 3.30 or 4 would work for us. Would 3 p.m. work for you? Yeah, let's just do 3 p.m. again. Okay. okay. Sounds good. I didn't realize. Okay, we'll, we'll send you a calendar invite, and uh, we look forward to talking with you next week. All right. Let me ask you, Ryan, are you going to have to know who's going to be on our end? So um, you're going to have a couple tech guys, I assume. Just, we have a couple of our technicians on the end. Is there any other person you can think of internally that you might need? Or? Um, no. No, I think, I think we're good. Okay. Okay. 
right. Appreciate your time again. Have a great afternoon. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. All right. Thanks, Ryan. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye. Bye.